Ambassador Richardson, I have a question for you. There seems to be a huge division in thought between whether Assad is the solution to the problem in Syria or the cause of the problem in Syria. How do you see uh, Assad? Assad is a problem in Syria. There has to be a democratic transition. And the United States and Russia and Europe to get him to go, especially Russia, which is giving him more arms and ammunition. He's a killer, a violator of the rights, he just wants to stay in power, he's corrupt, and unless he goes, there's not going to be peace in Syria. The millions of refugees deserve better. The millions of refugees in Syria deserve better. They are the the problem. He's not the solution. Thank you. God bless than under Rouhani. Under Rouhani, there have been 2,000 executions. According to Amnesty International, 700 this year. On September 20th, the latest execution was a 19-year-old boy, 19 years old. And there are reports of men and women being blinded, acid attacks on women, there's a report that in September there's going to be an Iranian parliament special session on the treatment of women, which is not good, which is negative, which shows that besides there being a lack of fair elections and freedom of the press and freedom of parliament and assembly, there is massive violations of human rights. And this is Amnesty International saying it. This is the UN Human Rights Commission saying it. So it's not just those that are against the regime. This is documented and this needs to end. And there's a democratic alternative of human rights right here. Right? That's you. Right? And that's us. And America should stand behind that movement. International terrorism. The United States and Iran have reached a nuclear deal. What I believe needs to happen is an international effort to stop Iran's support for international terrorism. Under this agreement, Iran is able to get the embargo lifted on weapons, on missiles, on conventional arms. And the worry is that with these sanctions lifted, that they will use this money and this financial support to keep messing around in the region. First, Syria. Assad is a killer, a violator of human rights. And Iran is helping him, along with Russia. Iran and Russia together working to provide arms and ammunition and troops to Assad who was starting to go down. Look what's happened in Syria. Almost a million refugees, men and women that want to leave, that want a better life, that want to go to Europe. Germany has responded, but a lot of other countries in Europe have not, like in Hungary. There has to be compassion for these refugees. And they are caused by the support for terrorism that countries like Russia and Iran give to Assad. That has to change. Do you want to see that change? Are, are you ready to stand with democratic forces in Syria? Are you ready to stand with the international community for Assad to leave office? Continuing on with support for terrorism, Iran is able to put money with the Houthis in Yemen to find ways for them to disrupt a democracy there. They're messing around with Hamas and Hezbollah, providing sanctuary and assistance to those terrorist groups. They want to destroy our ally Israel. Israel is a bulwark of strength 
for America in the Middle East. They want to destroy Israel. They're also messing around in Bahrain and Lebanon. They want to move forward also continuing with sectarian violence in Iraq. So, the behavior of Iran is not good. They are not a moderate regime. Are they a moderate regime? They're a regime that is supporting international terrorism. They're a regime that today is violating human rights and executing people right and left. And they execute because they want to strike fear. They want to send a message that with those executions, that that is going to translate into a fear of the Iranian people. But what they don't know is that throughout Europe and the United States and Latin America and Asia and Africa, there are people like you, right? That want democracy in Iran, right? That want to continue the fight for democracy, for women's rights, for a democratic alternative. And so that these young people can have a future. They're Americans, but they want to see their counterparts in Iran. The young people have that future. So, they told me that I should speak for five minutes. I'm now in my eighth minute. So I'm going to conclude. I think the task ahead is not just rallies like this. It's continued presence on social media. I want to see thousands of tweets after this rally from you. Thousands of tweets. And Facebook. That is how the world is communicating today. I love all this television and press that is here. But especially the young people, we want to give them that message. They're doing it through social media. And the message should be, we want democracy in Iran, right? We want to stop the human rights violations and executions in Iran. We want to stop the international terrorism and support they give in Iran. We want Assad to go down. We want Saudi Arabia to get stronger, right? We want Israel to get stronger. But we want America to lead, right? Do you want America to lead? Wasn't the Pope great? You know, he's like me, a Hispanic. Argentinian. Habla español. Hablan español aquí, no, verdad? Well, look, I'm honored to be here with my friends from the Iranian democracy movement that are here. Friends uh, that I've known for a long time. It's great to be with Governor Ridge. I, I think he already spoke with Alan Dershowitz. You have a lot of stars from American politics here. But I want to close with this. Are we ready for democracy in Iran? Yeah. Are you going to be part of it? Yeah. Do we want them to stop terrorism? Yeah. Do we want them to honor human rights? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Let's hear it for the young people. For democracy. Thank you.